You know, one of the most effective ways to catch walleyes is to use a float. And today, I'm gonna show you a very unique way to use a float or a bobber, whatever you wanna call it, to catch walleyes right here on Mille Lacs Lake. Stay right where you're at, Fish Head's coming up. You know, there are several different ways you can bobber fish. You can anchor up, you can drift along, or you can do what I'm doing today. You can just drive around until you see a fish that you think is active. And what I mean by that is I'm looking for fish that are up. And when I say up, I mean arcing up above the bottom on the screen. And those are fish that I believe are active and ready to bite. They're up and feeding. When a walleye's not feeding, he just lays belly on the bottom. And a lot of times those are tougher fish to get. Now when they're doing that, I anchor. Because ultimately I need to sit on them longer. But when, when they're up like this and you got calm sky or calm seas like we have today, you can just drive around like I'm doing. And when you see them up, you just flip that bobber right back over the back of the boat. And you know what? Big walleyes like that one, they'll get aggressive and come roaring up and eat it. Look at the size of that fish to start our day. Holy smokes. What a beautiful walleye. This is one of those fish. That I'll tell you what, he's probably not gonna fall for a Lindy rig this morning, okay? He's by himself and he's out running around. I'd have to cover a lot of ground to get to this fish. But by driving around with the big engine, I got to him fast. I found him, I gave him a chance to look at something right above his head, and with that, he ended up up here with us. What a great walleye. That's what you can do on Mille Lacs Lake with a float. Holy smokes, is that a beautiful fish. Let's get him back in the water and we'll drive around and find us another one. There she goes. There's nothing, in my opinion, as fun as releasing a big fish. I like to eat them, but let me tell you something. It's cool to watch a big fish swim away. good one. The locations that you want to do this are a little different than if I was anchored and, and let me explain why. I want to set my depth one time. Okay now I'm not so concerned with just being a foot off the bottom or, or two feet off the bottom. I'm concerned with just making sure that I'm up above the fish no matter what depth I'm in when I drive over them. So what I mean by that is I'm counting on the fact these fish can see pretty well. Now on Mille Lacs Lake, we have pretty clear water. Across the Midwest, you run into that a lot. So what I wanna do is actually set three to four feet above the bottom because what that's gonna do is make it so I'm normally two to three feet above the fish. Now if he can see it, he'll come roaring up and hit it just like this guy did, okay? So you don't gotta worry about being that one foot away, you know, one foot over the top of the fish. You know, think about ice fishing. What do we do when we're ice fishing? We do our best to get a fish to move up. And when you get a fish to come up, usually they'll hit. So ultimately what I'm trying to do is be up above the fish far enough to make sure that this guy, and you can see his eyes are right on top of his head. He can see up, okay? And in this clear water, he sees that jig and that leech up here, and it can be two, three, four feet above him, and he'll still be able to get it. Let's let this guy go, and then we'll talk a little bit more location. Ooh, he's in a hurry. What I'm looking for, for the most part at this time of year, is your deeper stuff, your mid-lake deep stuff. Now, the top of this one today is about 27 feet. Out off the edge, it's 28, 29. So I'm able to set it one depth, drive around this whole thing, and focus on the top. And the number one reason I focus on the top is this. When they're on the top, they are feeding. So bottom line is, when they're out off the edge, they're usually resting. So what I want to do is set for the top, find an area with an expansive top like this one has, so that I can drive all over watching that graph. When I see a fish up, I'm going to drop on him.
That's a great example right there of how high a fish will come up. I just rolled off the edge of this thing a little bit. I'm at 28 now, and I'm set at about 22, and this fish came up six feet and hit it, and I mean, he hit it literally seconds after I dropped it in. So what I'm getting at is these fish, they can see better than you think. And if you put this thing in front of them, put that bait in front of them, they'll come up and hit it. Let's get this guy in here. We're gonna measure him. He's gonna be close to, to being a dinner fish for us. So let's take a look at it. And then I'm gonna show you what I'm using so that you can rig up the same way and come out and do exactly what we're doing today. Because this is just a fun way to fish, but it's really important that you have the right stuff. 18 and a quarter. That's a dinner fish. We'll throw him in. Here's the rig that I'm using today. It's actually really simple and it just flat out catches fish. I'm using a 30 second ounce Lindy jig and they come in a whole variety of colors. And here's the thing, if I'm seeing fish up, when I drop on them, if I don't get them to bite and I go through that cycle two, three times, I'm gonna change colors because color makes a big difference fishing like this because I'm relying on sight. These fish are looking up at it. So switch colors often. Then I use a large split shot. Now the reason I use one single large split shot is a lot of times I see people using two. In fact, I used to use two. But here's what happens. When you cast, the split shot can get going like this on the line. That makes it more apt to get tangled up up on top of the float when it hits the water. So go with a single one and you'll have a lot less tangles. Then there's two different floats I use. Today I'm using the Phil Wobble Bobber. Now the reason I'm using this Wobble Bobber is because it's very calm out here. So any little bit of ripple is gonna make this bobber just sit and go like this. And it's actually putting that action all the way down here on this jig and leech, okay? It's just bouncing around like that. And it's got a brass grommet at both ends, which allows me to cast it a long ways if I get too far past the fish or flip it out and know the line's gonna get down real quick. Now, if I was in a deal where I had a two foot chop out here and I didn't have to worry about putting extra action on it, I could use a Phil Pro Series float as well. Now, when I'm doing that, I use the double XL size. Here I'm using the quarter ounce wobble bobber. So make sure you've got a little variety of that stuff. You know, get some different colored jigs. Get a couple of these floats, make sure you got some Pro Series as well and you're gonna have yourself covered no matter what the situation when you get out here, you're gonna be able to fish like we are today. And I'll tell you what, this is some of the funnest fishing you can do because every time I drop the line, I know I'm dropping over the top of a fish and I'm most likely gonna get bit. Hey, let me give you a little tip. I'm doing something a little different than a lot of folks. I'm not using a plain hook and trying to be subtle. I'm actually using that 30 second ounce jig head. Now there is a reason for it. If you look at a minnow in the water, or it looks like you might be another keeper, or you look at a leech as they're swimming along, what you'll notice is that they swim horizontally. You will not find a minnow, if you look over the side of your boat, swimming vertically very often. Neither will you find a leech doing that, or if you come across a crawler, you just you just don't see that. Let's see if this guy's gonna make it. Well, a little bit too big. I'm gonna let him go, but then I wanna show you what I'm talking about here. Oh, Jesus, come here, buddy. Let me get you out of here. Don't worry. There you go. Woo. He was in a hurry to get back. <laughs> but here's the thing. When you take that 30 second ounce jig head, and you've got that thing hanging here, look how this hangs. It hangs horizontally. What that means is when I hook that leech through that sucker, he's constantly swimming horizontally. He'll look like either a real leech in the water or what a minnow is gonna look like. If I'm using a plain hook, it's gonna be hanging vertical. Now, when you're hanging vertical, the bottom line is that doesn't look as natural. So keep that in mind, that's a tip that it'll make a big, big difference for you. Use a 30 second ounce jig head. It'll not only add color, but it's gonna make your bait look a lot more natural. That is so cool when you have that happen. What I just did there is I had thrown on a fish back here. And what I did is I'm drifting along and I looked up at my graph 
and there were fish coming by on the screen like crazy right under the boat. So what I did is I real quick like shut the motor off so that I wouldn't spook them because we're in this clear water. Sometimes that'll happen. So I killed the motor real quick and I just dropped down right next to the boat. And he took off with it like a bullet. I'll tell you, this is one of the funnest techniques that you can do if you enjoy walleye fishing. And it's a perfect technique to use when you get into midsummer and these fish get themselves out in a little bit deeper water. And what I mean by that is I use this technique anytime these fish slide down deeper than 15 feet and I can see them on my graph. It's almost like playing a video game. It can be just one after another, just like that one right there. Man, it's just been a great day on Mille Lacs Lake. And I'll tell you what, day in, day out, that technique catches more fish than anything else I do out here because I'm constantly on active fish. Give it a shot yourself. Hey, for more current and up-to-date information, check back with us here every single week on Fish Ed, and we'll bring you a bite like this, and we'll show you exactly how to do it so you can go do it yourself.